in our tradition, today is Passion Sunday. And between Passion Sunday and Holy Week, we have Palm Sunday. So next Sunday will be Palm Sunday. And I want us today to focus on the passion of Jesus. What was his passion? And as I speak, I want you to think of that collect. What was the passion of Jesus? What was he passionate about? Our gospel passage helps us to find some solutions to this all-important question, the passion of Jesus, what Jesus was passionate about. His passion was just one thing and one thing alone, to glorify his Father by offering his life for the salvation of the whole world. That was the passion Jesus Christ had. And he was going to achieve that by doing three things simultaneously by his death. What were the three things? First, he will glorify the Father by making him known through his death. Secondly, he will judge the world by paying the price for sin. And thirdly, he will rescue all people by bringing them all in, those outside, those who've been written off, those people felt were not qualified to be God's children by adoption. The death of Jesus will bring them all in. Jesus achieved his goal to bring glory to God by first dying. And that is why the death of Jesus should never be compromised in our life of witness. Jesus offers his life to come alive in the millions of others who today believe in him. However, first, he must die. And if we, his followers, wish to pass on his life, then we also must learn the pattern of life which Jesus has laid for us. We will bear fruit only if and when we die to serve. That is very clear in this passage. I want to remind us, before we go into the main theme for today, that God has given each one of us a passion. Each one of his children by adoption, God has given a passion. It is a unique combination of personality, experience, and our spiritual gifting. And so I want to ask, because your gifting is unique and it is irreplaceable as a member of the body of Christ. It is yours and yours alone, and no one else can take that place. And so on this Sunday, as we think about that passion Christ had, I want to ask you, what is it you are passionate about as a believer? What's your passion? For me, that is the challenge. And I want us to help our thinking by picking on a couple of lessons from the life and ministry of Jesus as enshrined in the gospel passage for today. These two lessons are, number one, Jesus teaches in his life and ministry that there is room 
for struggle in the Christian journey. There is room for struggle in the Christian journey. As you carry on your pilgrimage on this side of eternity, there is room for struggle. And secondly, that in the cross of Jesus, the outside, represented by the Greeks in our passage, are drawn in. So let's take these two lessons very quickly. There is room for struggle in the Christian journey. And I want to read a section from our gospel passage. Jesus says, Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Friends, Jesus struggled in the face of death. Even though he was perfectly obedient to the will of God, he also struggled with the difficulty of what was coming. He knew what was coming. He knew it was death. Jesus struggled. Martin Luther said once, no one ever feared death as much as this man. Grip that. I say it again, no one ever feared death as much as this man. Friends, it was agony for Jesus to do the will of God, his father. It was agony for him to bring glory to his father. It was agony for Jesus to, to deal and to finish with the prince of this world. It was agony for him to draw all people to himself. But there was no other way. This was the only way. And he had to go through it. So the son was troubled. And heaven answered the son's prayer with an articulate voice. I have glorified it. And now we glorify it again, says God. And we told those around there, they heard the voice, but they couldn't understand. So friends, what's the challenge? Here is the point. As followers of Jesus Christ, there is room in the Christian journey for struggle. Let's be honest about it. Secondly, there is room for our weakness. You only need to look at the Old Testament prophets. We only need to look at the life of St. Paul. His testimonies. And there is room for us to wish that our roads would not be so difficult. That's what it means to struggle. I love one of the songs we sang, Asking God for Glory. Brothers and sisters, asking God to glorify himself in us is a risky prayer. You want me to repeat that? Asking God to glorify himself in us is a risky prayer. How do we respond when that glory is spelt agony, like Jesus. He said, save me from this hour. The other versions did actually answer that. No, for this hour I've come. Brothers and sisters, we should not ask to be saved from agony, but that we glorify God through it. That's what Jesus is teaching us on this Passion Sunday. 
Believers in Christ are not protected from pain. We have no insurance policy against agony. We don't. This is because sorrow can burn up a great deal of shallowness in our Christian faith, or it can lead to bitterness. It all depends on our heart. It depends on the motive. And I want to ask, what are you passionate about? In what will you want to give God the glory in your life? Jesus was not saved from the hour. He was saved for the hour. And so is every believer in him. I don't know how many of you were here on Wednesday. The presentation by uh, Dr. Annette. I would love to encourage you to listen to it. It's all about what we're talking about this morning. How we stay in that agony. How we stay in the difficulty we are facing. Knowing that God in Christ often pulls us through. Second lesson is simple. That in the cross, the outside is brought in. Again, our passage reads... Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself, says Jesus. In what sense was the ruler of this earth cast out? at the death of Jesus. Firstly, we know that the devil, Satan, the ruler of this world, remains active in the world, even today, because the New Testament tells us how to protect ourselves against Satan. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10, talks about putting on the whole armor of God. However, the sense in which the ruler of this world was cast out or judged is that he experienced his decisive defeat at the cross. Not the final defeat, but the one that secures and guarantees the final defeat. Friends, Jesus did not give in. He remained committed to his father. He remained committed to his passion. He kept entrusting himself to God. Jesus did not sin. And therefore, Jesus bore our sin. And on the cross, he stripped Satan of the one weapon that he had that could damn us. And that is the valid accusation of our unforgiven sin. In Romans chapter 3, Paul says, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So that weapon is taken from the hand of the ruler of this world. He is disarmed. We have no unforgiven sin anymore in Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus covers our sin, all of them. So the God of this world is cast out of the courtroom. Our case is settled. Our judgment is passed. And our accuser has no case in his files against us anymore. 
and to God alone be the glory. And Jesus goes on, he says, I will draw all people to myself. This, I believe, means that when Christ died on the cross, when he was lifted up on the cross, he actually secured, he obtained and guaranteed the homecoming of his sheep, the end gathering of all God's children by adoption. That's what it means. So there is room. Everyone in Christ who accepts the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ will be drawn in. Therefore, brothers and sisters, God today multiplies the way he gets glory in the death of his son by securing with absolute certainty the ingathering of all those whom he has appointed to eternal life. God glorified himself and finally by shining as the light of the world in your life, in my life, that believe in him through us, he will draw others to himself. That is the challenge of being a follower of Jesus Christ. And so friends, as God's children by adoption, committed to living a life of faithfulness and witness to Christ, it is my prayer that we all may find the courage in the middle of our struggles to remember that Jesus is not unable to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. There is room for struggles. May we also be ready and willing to participate in the drawing in of those who are on the margin. And may we be ready to listen and receive those who come wishing to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. There are many who wish to see Jesus. And it is my prayer that our main passion in life will be to bring glory to God in Christ Jesus. Amen.